everybody, it's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for my January reading wrap up. So, we are in a slightly different position and I am not made up at all or anything wearing the glasses. I'm not feeling 100%. I have been not feeling great recently, just nothing to worry about, just a few different things going on. But I really wanted to get this reading wrap up up before the end of February because otherwise we're going to be having, you know, a long double wrap up, which I don't really want to do. Um, and also I've been skipping a lot of videos recently and I know that it doesn't really matter, but I like having my schedule. So I want to try and keep it. So I'm feeling okay at the moment, not amazing, but okay. So I'm just going to take that as a moment to film, which is why we have, we have this today. <laughs> anyway, uh, so January's reading wrap up. I am going to start with stats this time, and then we'll talk about the books that I read. I do have my stats pages in my reading journal, and they uh, where I am keeping track of all the things that I want to try and keep track of throughout my year in terms of stats. So let's go through those now. So in January, I read six books, which gave me a total of 1,971 pages. Of those books, none of them were teaching books with my project to develop my teaching skills a little bit more. None of them fit into that. One of the books had LGBTQIA plus rep. Two of the books were written by BIPOC authors. I didn't read any books by Australian authors, which also means no books by Australian Indigenous authors. No translated books. I did read one book that was not European inspired, so that's good. I read four physical books, one ebook and one audio book. None of them were young adult. One was middle grade and five were adult. I didn't have any comics or graphic novels or manga. I read two from my own TBR. Two were reread. Uh, in terms of genre breakdown, we didn't have any fantasy or historical fantasy or historical fiction. We had one sci-fi slash dystopian. We had two paranormal. We had one contemporary slash literary fiction one romance, none were dark academia, horror or gothic books, and one was a thriller slash mystery. I didn't read any non-fictions or classics. Fortunately, I didn't DNF any books and I didn't have any two stars. I did read two three-star books, three four-star books, and one five-star book. And in terms of average, my star rating average was four stars, which is amazing. And my core pile average was 7.7, .7, which again was fantastic. So those are my January stats. So we are going to do this in the order in which I actually wrote about them in my journal, which is how I always do things. But first, let's have a very brief look at how I went for the actual TBR for Roll of Reads for January. So on my TBR for Roll of Reads for January, I had Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I did read that one. I had Clockwork Boys by T. King Fisher, which I didn't read because it didn't come into the library. Um, I had to order it. I ordered it back in late November, I think, hoping that I'd, it had come in January so I could read it as part of Bethany's Patreon, but I couldn't because it didn't come through. I do have it now, but whether I'll get around to it, I'm not sure. <laughs> I was also supposed to read Defiant, but I think you may remember that I ended up not reading that because Alison, who I was going to buddy read it with, realized that she hadn't read Cytonic, so she couldn't read Defiant, so we put it off. Um, then I was going to read Bookshops and Bone Dust, which I did not read. Healer of the Water Monster was also on the TBR, and I did read that one. A Lesson in Vengeance was on the TBR, and I didn't read that. Homegoing was also on my TBR, which I did not read. A Thousand Splendid Sons was also on my TBR. I also didn't read that. And The Blind Earthworm in the Labyrinth was also on my TBR, and I didn't read that either. So I'm very glad that I decided to 
not have punishments for my games anymore because as you can tell they are making me much more likely to be mood reading and yeah I'm just enjoying it more so I think that's a good thing. So I did do a bit more mood reading. I also went away with my friend Rachel who came to visit me and we went away to the north of the state so it just meant that I took books that I thought we'd both potentially be interested in reading and then I yeah read books that were easier as well because travel you know you don't want to be in a big in-depth fantasy. So that's the TBR that was Roll of Reads. I ended up deciding to go in TBR-a-thon that, that was run by Leandra from the TBR Zero. I will link her channel in the description below along with anyone else I talk about so that you can go and check them out and subscribe. It was a really really fun readathon. There were multiple ways that you could participate in the readathon. There was a bingo board, there was a this or that board, there was all sorts of things. I decided to go with the map and with the map you had a variety of different ways to travel around where you were going either from the car to the bookstore or the bookstore back or, or either way and following any path you would have to do there were certain stops along the way so I decided to go along the cozy path I actually started at the bookstore and I went to stop number three where I read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy so that was a book to do with travel which the Hitchhiker's is to do with travel then I went up to the city and that was this prompt mean city streets so a book with an urban setting and for that I read moon over Soho and then I went along to the cozy prompt and I also I did two books in one so with that book I also went to the cryptoid in the lake um, so I read a the hill of the water monster which was cozy middle grade but also had creatures that legendary creatures in there um, so that was the TBR-a-thon. It was a really fun readathon. I had a really good time. And yeah, thanks Leandra for hosting that readathon. It was great. Okay, so let's now talk about the books that I read in January. So first of all, I had The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is the first book in the series by the same name, written by Douglas Adams. It was originally a radio show. I think think the people who I don't remember who the original publishers were but I think that they then commissioned Douglas Adams to write the radio program into a book and he ended up writing them kind of concurrently which means that it's a little bit confusing and yeah it's just a little bit of a confusing story um I have read these a, m a number of times it's been a number of years but I've read these a few times and I've read all of them kind of all together and so for me the whole story is one whole story but we are reading as part of the read long that I'm running with my friends Ren from the Reading Ren, Ash from Ash's Adventures in Books, Chelsea from Chelsea Zhao and Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction we are doing a read long of these books so we started them in January obviously so yeah it's been a bit of a a while since I read the book so it's really fun to catch up on them but it's also a little bit funny to read them not one after the other immediately even though I am reading them one after the other. This is a kind of space opera and it is about a earthling, a, a man called Arthur Dent from Earth who discovers that there are other races and other peoples in the galaxy. One day when he finds out along with the rest of the Earth that the Earth is being demolished to make way for a hyperspace bypass and his friend who he thinks is just a normal human Ford Prefect comes along and tells him that he's actually from a different planet and that he can hitch a ride and save them but he can only save himself and Arthur so he does that and it's about their adventures um and yeah what happens along the way we have aliens we have a depressed but incredibly intelligent robot it is such a fun crazy ride and it's very sarcastic it's very much a um what's the word I'm looking for a um satire is the word I'm looking for very much a satire um and commentary on the world and the way that we live I love this series I gave this book a 8.43 in core pile and a four and a half stars. Like I said, I love this series. I had a great time reading this book. We had a lovely chat about it. I will link the live show for restaurant, uh, sorry, for hitchhikers that we've had already in the description that was on my channel. So you can go and see what we all thought of it. But yeah, I had a really great time. I think 
uh, Douglas Adams is hilarious. I think the entire series is hilarious and I really enjoyed my time reading it. So that was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Next up we have Moon Over Soho by Ben Aronovich. This is the second book in the Rumors of London series and this is a paranormal crime series. The first book is called Rivers of London and I won't go into a huge amount of detail about this book. It doesn't really spoil that much for the series in general. They are kind of monster of the week, case of the week type stories but there are things that happened in the first book that does affect what happens in this book. So we follow a police constable called Peter Grant and in the first book he discovers that he can speak to ghosts and he also discovers as a result of being able to speak to paranormal entities that the world isn't quite what he thinks and that there is a um, section of the Met which is the Metropolitan Police in London so it takes place in the UK in London that is a paranormal department and he is recruited by the leader of that department and also only other member who is a wizard and he's recruited to learn magic and to be another person who is dealing with magical crime. This one like I said is the second book in the series and again we have another magical crime, a series of crimes going on. I really really enjoyed this book as well. It is quite gritty but also quite humorous. It has a similar kind of vibe, a similar kind of storytelling style and humour to Douglas Adams, to the Hitchhiker's books and also I feel like a little bit to Terry Pratchett as well. It's got that very kind of dry, sarcastic, um, satirical kind of storytelling and humour which I really really enjoy. So I really enjoyed this one. Um, I really like the characters in this story as well. I particularly really enjoy our main character Peter Grant. Um, I love the way he's portrayed so I would definitely recommend if you enjoy paranormal crime I think that there was something that you would enjoy. I don't know if that's a normal subgenre that people you know a very common subgenre I guess I'm trying to say but um I know there are some around so I would recommend this one I think it's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed my time with it. Then I read The Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young. This was a really really sweet really really cute little um middle grade and I really enjoyed my time with it. So we follow Nathan who is 11 or 12 and he goes to stay during his summer holidays with his grandmother who lives out in the desert I think in Colorado and she is a member of the Navajo tribe of First Nations people in America and so is Nathan and Nathan discovers that there are such things as water monsters and other spirits and creatures of Navajo legend and he befriends a water monster. It is a drought where at the time where he's living and the drought is happening because the water monster is sick and so he agrees to help the water monster and he has to travel into the other world and help the water monster to become well again. I believe it's the first book in a series. I don't know whether I will pick up the other series. I don't have any firm plans to do so but I did really enjoy this one so I'm not against it, I just haven't sought them out as of yet, but we'll see. I wrote here in my journal that it didn't particularly blow me away, so I gave it a 6.75 on Core Pile, which is 3.5 stars, because it didn't particularly blow me away. But having said that, it is not aimed at me. It is a middle grade, it is aimed at 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds and I think it would work really really well for children of that age. I think it was really well written and like I said it was just really really fun, paranormal. I really enjoyed Nathan as a character. I thought he was really well written. I thought all the characters were really well written. I had a great deal of fun with Nathan helping to to heal the water monsters. So yeah definitely worth the read and I definitely enjoyed myself. Next up we have Happy Place by Emily Henry. I read this one on audio and I think that was a good way to go. I enjoyed my time reading it on audio. I'm not sure whether you would classify this as a romance or a contemporary. I personally feel that it is a contemporary but it's definitely a big focus on the romance. So we follow our main character Harriet and we jump backwards and forwards in two different timelines. It is a second chance romance so in the present day timeline we follow Harriet and she has gone to a friend's 
Holiday House, and the Holiday House is being sold by the friend's parents, who's actually her parents. They used to always spend time in the holidays when they're at university at this place, the group of friends, Harriet's group of friends. And so they have gone there to have a final hurrah. And there's a bunch of other things that go on in the story. Now, Harriet and Wynne were engaged, but they've broken up, but they haven't told this group of friends that they've broken up and Harriet doesn't want to. And things happen on the holiday that makes them even less wanting to so they're pretending to still be together but it's also about them figuring out whether they can in fact be together and kind of dealing with what happened when they split up and why and whether they can yeah come back together again we also go back in time to when different spots in their relationship so when they were first getting together when they were breaking up different places in their relationship. I did enjoy this one. I gave this one a 6.43 on Corpa, so slightly lower than the Healer of the Water Monster, but it does end up with 3.5 stars as well. I did enjoy it. I had a good time. It wasn't anything particularly incredible. It didn't blow me away. I thought it was reasonably well written, but nothing, like I said, particularly exciting. I have read Beach Read from is that the one? Yes, from Emily Henry, and I did really enjoy that one. This one, I would say, wasn't as good, but it wasn't terrible. It was, yeah, it was a fun time. If you enjoy romance, um, if you enjoy contemporary stories, you would probably enjoy this one, but I wouldn't necessarily think that you'd be blown away by it, in my opinion. So in this, in the journal again, I wrote, I enjoyed this book, but I didn't love it. I like Emily Henry's characters, but I didn't entirely love the premise. It was a fun read though, so yeah. All right, then I read Kindred. This was my reread for January. So I unfortunately forgot at the beginning of my TBR for January uh, to let you guys know about my reread project for this year. So I have a number of different books that throughout my time on Booktube, I have put in favourites of the year um, and different lists like that where I say these books are favourites of mine. But then I'm quite a rereader, I used to be anyway, and one of the hallmarks of being a favourite of mine is that I have reread it and loved it each time. So some of these books that I've called favourites in recent times, I haven't reread to kind of check in. So my reread project is to pick some favourites and to read one each month. I've got a spinner wheel, and everything. So this is the book that the spinner wheel spun for me in January. So it's Kindred by Octavia E. Butler and I absolutely love this one as well. I gave this a five star. I haven't even written down what I gave it on Core Pile but it was obviously nine something but yeah I gave it five stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thought it was incredibly well written. Um, it really talks about some really interesting and quite upsetting topics. So um, let's see what I wrote in my journal. <laughs> I've written, there is so much to think about in this book. It really shines a light onto the lives of slaves during those times in the US. So this book follows a woman in her I think late 20s called Dana and Dana lives in the US I think in California in the um 70s I think yes 1976 but she is married she's a black woman she's married to a white man called Kevin and one day she's just minding her own business and suddenly she f goes gets dizzy and then she kind of finds herself in a different place. She is on the banks of a river and she sees a child is drowning and she goes to save the child and then the mother comes along and is acting very weirdly but she saves the child and then she kind of gets dizzy again and then she's back in her home with her husband and then the same thing happens a few days I think later and she figures out that she is going back in time. Now she's going back to uh, Maryland in I don't, oh, 1815. So she's going back to the antebellum south in America and she is a black woman going back in time and interacting with this white boy called Rufus. And she figures out that it has something to do with when he is in danger and she gets called back to save his life, to help him out of these situation she gets herself himself into. The amount of time that she spends back in time it gets longer and longer and she's in a lot of danger because 
it's the antebellum south she is they they think she is a slave she doesn't have any free papers so they either think she's an escaped slave or that she yeah she doesn't have any papers to say that she's a technically a freed slave and she's not in the right part of America to be able to function as a freed slave and so yeah there is a lot of talk about slavery in the antebellum south there was a lot of talk about the situation that people would have found themselves in what life was like it is very hard hitting but it's really well written it's just incredibly easy to read despite how hard hitting it is and like i said it deals with some incredibly difficult topics but does it in a really really interesting way and it's really really readable I've said her characters are very well written, three-dimensional and nuanced. You don't necessarily love all the characters all the time. You don't necessarily hate all the characters all the time. Even though you are going with this woman back in time to a time when she was a slave and was really going to be badly treated and owned by people, you don't necessarily, the people that own her the plantation owners you don't necessarily immediately have horror like you don't always hate them and you can see particularly Rufus you can see what his life is like and you can see sympathy for him as well so yeah I thought this was incredibly incredibly well written really glad that I'm doing this project and just found this absolutely amazing so that was Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Highly, highly recommend. I would call it literary fiction with some sci-fi elements. But yeah, if that's something that sounds interesting to you, I would highly recommend. And then the final book that I read that I'm going to talk about today is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. I gave this one a 7.86 in Core Pile, which was four stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. I had a great time with it. So again, I'm just going to read what I've written in here. <laughs> so I wrote, I loved this book. I love Ashley Herring Blake's writing style. I love the way she writes characters. She puts such obvious heart into each one. Um, they are three-dimensional, nuanced and flawed people. And I love that way of writing characters. I love it when authors really make their characters feel real by making them flawed and people who, you know, don't always make the right choices, who don't always treat each other well, who don't always think things through, but are still sympathetic people who you can still feel for and want to know about and want to have they still have redeeming features. You you can see both sides of their personality, like you can with people that you know. You know, you see their good points, you see their bad points, and you like them anyway. And that's what I found I found in this book, and Delilah Green doesn't care. So this is the second book in the Bright Falls trilogy. So in the first book we followed Delilah, who is the stepsister of Astrid, and in this book you follow Astrid. Now Astrid is Astrid's life has been completely upended um, before this book started and you are coming into her about a year maybe or so later and she's trying to pick up the pieces and one of the ways she's doing that is to throw herself into work. She runs an interior design company and she is employed by the owners of a local inn. Yeah, it's a local inn and to, to des redesign they're they're in and it is also while a tv show is happening so it's going to be part of a diy in style type tv show um and that's the setup we have our other main character is jordan and jordan is the one of the people who owns the inn uh, it's actually her grandmother that owns the inn and her and her brother are the only kind of um descendants who are helping the grandmother redesign the inn. Jordan has a lot of ideas for the inn. She doesn't necessarily agree with Astrid's vision for the inn so they're quite at odds with each other but they're also really attracted to each other so it is their romance. And yeah this was definitely a romance. Incredibly well written one. I had a great time. Like I said I love the characters. I love both these characters. I think they are fantastic. I just love the way Ashley Herring 
Blake Bryant. Like I said, I love her character work and yeah, definitely highly recommend this book. It is just so much fun, such a good read and gives such really wonderful character studies. So I highly recommend. Um, but yeah, that was my January reads. So that's it. That's it for the video. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books and whether you enjoyed them. Let me know how your reading was for January. Yeah, comment all of that down in the comments below. If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me a leaf emoji because we have leaves on both of these covers. So yeah, leave me some kind of leaf emoji. All of my social media details are listed in the description below, so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.